Teachers more now than ever are asked to do so much. Um, we're asked to do a lot, especially with everything going on in our world. Um, and it's easy to lose track of exactly what we are doing as far as educators and how to stay innovative. That is why we are making this presentation today. We want you to be innovative, whether you're remote, in person, or hybrid. Um, our mission at the Innovative Teacher Podcast is wherever you're at, um, you know, you've come to the right place because we are here to help guide you through STEM, STEAM, um, tech innovation um, journey, and we're all here to learn and grow and help our classrooms move forward and help kids learn in new engaging ways. And our bottom line is we want you to be innovative and that looks different in every room. So that is why we're going over five hacks to make your room innovative today. Makerspace. So Makerspace is something that I started out doing rather than STEM. I did Makerspace um, because it's very open-ended building. It's flexible materials when you're building. Um, you can have materials from donations from kids, whether it's cardboard cups, tape, cardstock paper, popsicle sticks, pipe cleaners, and kids are able to build with it. And um, the learning really happens for kids with Makerspace when they start to build like a boat, for example. Well, now they got to learn about buoyancy and how things float and what makes things float and weight distribution. So all that learning still happens, but it happens through an open-ended building model where kids are able to use materials to have a hands-on experience to learn through science. Um, why have it? Um, it's creative and kids are able to kind of have a creative outlet no matter where you're at hybrid or home, you know, you, they can build with things from home and it's low prep. Really, this picture over here to the right, well, that's why we put that. You could have a box in a corner with just random stuff. Um, and even teachers from around the building could drop things in there that they were going to throw away anyways that kids could build out of. And it's a very creative outlet for those kids to say, my voice feels heard. I feel like I am in control of my learning and they want to learn. The passion is there. And that's why you could really use Makerspace. So we now in our classrooms, we have tons of different transitions and um, kids cleaning up, kids coming into the room, whether you're in a STEM classroom or the regular classroom. And so those transitions can be awesome opportunities to integrate STEM in a creative way. So um, I like I teach K through five STEM. And so when the kids come in, I usually have a little STEM warm up up on the screen. And so it's just some bite size STEM topics so that are relevant to the world. So maybe it's a person in STEM who has created an awesome invention that I want the kids to learn about. Or maybe it's something about how something is made, like how Legos are made. So really take uh, those transition times and make them a great learning experience. They're quick, they're actionable, they're really great to spark that discussion. And they're very, very low prep. So if you don't have time for, I guess, a makerspace or a project in the moment, this is a great way for kids to think about their world in a different way. Also stop motion animation, it's one of the oldest animation techniques. And I remember as a kid, I would watch Gumby. I don't know if any of you guys watch Gumby or the movie Chicken Run, which is a little creepy, but I watched that too. But stop motion animation is uh, lots of pictures with really tiny movements that are put together very quickly. And it's really great for the kids to see the components of animation and really break it down. And it's a lot easier than you think. So if you're really wanting to get started with technology, you don't know where to begin, Stop motion animation is a great way to bring any subject to life. So um, in my class, we did in uh, the life cycles of animals. And so we um, had the kids create their props out of paper. And then they took the pictures of the life cycle of that animal and put it together so we could see the progression of it getting older. So really, we just needed a piece of technology, some paper and crayons. And we got started and there was so much collaboration you can see in this picture um, taken last year. But there's so much collaboration that can happen with this easy animation technique. And there are so many different free applications out there to get started. So this can definitely be done in any classroom setting to just bring any subject to life. Um, our next one is PBL. PBL is something I'm particularly passionate about because um, I am a PBL trainer through Indiana. Um, kind of what PBL is, it's project-based learning. So there's a real 
world problem um, that kids get to solve. Um, and before all this, you know, th those problems could be related to a career path. So I could have a problem where different people came in and actually talked to the kids. And for them, it feels so real. It feels like they're actually doing something that's improving their community. And while they're doing that, they're able to learn. Obviously, that looks a little different now, um, but you can still use PBL um, because there's lots of applications for those problems and developing those problem solving skills, critical thinking skills, and what they can do to make their world a better place while learning and be job ready someday. Um, why have, have it? I feel like it integrates all subjects. I've seen teachers use it in English social studies. Um, all different subjects like that. And really, it can be any problem in your school. So for example, one of the um, PBL projects I did um, and I have for people to do usually is um, shoes for a purpose. So kids create shoes out of recyclable material and it represents a sustainable developmental goal, um, which is like world hunger, um, clean water, and that money then from those shoes, we sold those on eBay got raised to help those problems. So it felt really real for the kids because they were actually helping those causes. So the authenticity of it is just huge and the kid's voice, voice feels heard um, and they feel like they're actually doing something to make the world a better place all while learning in a classroom. So PBL can be a very powerful tool. Um, computer science unplugged activities are one of my favorites to do and I know Naomi um, has a lot of these also. Um, it provides a way for kids to go do problem solving skills through computer science without being on a computer. They can actually do a hands-on approach to learn about um, computation um, and all those different kind of computer science skills that they will build to then learn Java or HTML or whatever kind of different um, code you're teaching or languages. Um, and it's really like a hands-on approach. And the easiest way to figure out how you could possibly implement this is by saying, well, what kind of games do I have in my room that, can, that are towards computer science? Or what kind of activities can I do to demonstrate this computer science activity? So over in the picture to the right here, uh, my K-1 kids had to program the leprechaun to the gold. And even though this is very simple for K-1, it serves the purpose of them thinking of order of operations, which is a huge computer science component. Um, why have it? It's super low prep. Um, you really don't need many materials to do different activities like this. And it's an altern alter alternative to starting on a computer. Um, a lot of times I hear teachers say, well, I don't want my kids doing computer science because I don't want them on a computer for another hour a day. Well, this is an alternative to that so kids can learn those skills. And when they're doing that hands-on approach, it's going to be more concrete in their learning. So we have so many ideas and we... And this is definitely a brief overview of what you can do in any classroom setting. We have five more ways that you can add innovation in your classroom and we break those down for you in our free guidebook. So it's bit.ly slash innovative teacher pod. And if you just put your name and email, you can get this whole guidebook with pictures, examples, and different ways to just spark some creativity in your classroom. We also love chatting with you guys. Um, you probably saw we have a podcast. So Spencer and I meet weekly to be in your ears every week. Um, but we also are very active on social media. So uh, we both have our website. So I'm NaomiMeredith.com. You can find me on Instagram at NaomiMeredith underscore. And then Spencer's is SharpTheBuilder.com. And you can find him on Instagram. I know he's on Twitter also, but um, at SharpTheBuilder. But we love chatting with you guys in the comments in the dms and we are um, just very excited to connect with people all over the world and help answer questions and collaborate with you along the way <laughs>